All right, good morning again, grade 10. We are now in the middle of the discussion. And to give you a heads up, I prepared an activity for you. I think later than, or later around 30 minutes after discussing, all right? Larger non-stream chunks of lava, this is a continuation, or pre-existing rocks are called blocks, okay? The aggregate of pyroclastic debris that flows on the slope of the volcano is called pyroclastic flow deposit, okay? The one that actually expel on the crater. Those are pyroclastic flow deposit, okay? A pyroclastic deposit that is dominantly composed of humus is called the ignimbrite, okay? When the pyroclastic debris mixed with water, it actually forms a muddy slurry called lahar. Okay, this is how lahar is actually formed. Sure, why lahar is formed after a, a volcanic eruption? Okay, because, again, your pyroclastic deposit will actually mix, or the debris will actually mix with water, and it forms a lahar. Okay? Earthquake. So the second one is earthquake. We are we are already done with volcanic eruption. Earthquake is a is a vibration on the surface of the earth resulting from the sudden release of energy. It could be a small shaking that could sway hanging objects or very large movement that can destroy buildings and cause catastrophic damage. Okay, the breaking of rocks beneath the surface as a result of tectonic forces produce earthquake. If there is a movement of tectonic plates, there is usually earthquake. Okay? Again, it goes hand in hand. If there are also some volcanic eruption, then it says there is also earthquake that actually follows. Right? When you hold a stick on the opposite end and bends or bend it, it applies stress or directed pressure, storing energy in it. Okay? This is just an illustration. Okay? When the force is suddenly removed, the stick will bounce back to its original form, releasing a stored energy. Here comes your earthquake. After continuous bending, the stick will suddenly break and release energy, and it form in the form of vibrations and sound it returns to its original and bent form, but it is already shortened and divided into two because it, it is already broken. The concept now is the Elastic rebound theory. This is now the concept of elastic rebound theory. Okay, that um, these tectonic plates are just like sticks that you bend. Okay, once you once you release the pressure, it actually moves. Okay, in a vibration form. But when it actually breaks, it is actually divided into two. It is shortened already because it is already broken. Okay. This is the concept of elastic rebound theory, right? Earthquakes in rocks cause fractures to form. Earthquakes could also be could also occur when there are some existing fractures or faults that undergo renewed episode of sliding. If there are some continuous sliding happening there, tendency is it can actually create earthquake. A fault is a fracture, okay, on the one body of the rock slides pass apart okay faulting happens when the stress acting on the fault exceeds the, the frictional forces on both sides of the fault okay i think we already know this one um in our lower years we, we discussed this one majority of the earthquakes in the planet are due to the movement of existing faults okay other causes of earthquakes include the movement of magma underneath the volcano the explosion of the volcano large landslides, meteorite impact, and underground nuclear bomb tests. So these are just a few um, of some poses of these earthquakes. Okay. Holly is with us. Please turn on your camera, Holly. Okay. If earthquake happens, okay, tendency is it has a focus. Okay or hippocenter, this is the hippocenter. Above the hippocenter or focus is the epicenter, okay? And you can actually observe some wave, um, or, or, or shall we say, 
a vibration on the ground. So this is now your earthquake. This is a clear illustration. The place where rock ruptures and slips in the focus is the focus or hypocenter. That's in the center okay, of an earthquake. Energy radiates from the focus outward to the surface. Okay, The point at the center or the point at the surface directly above the focus is called the epicenter or earthquake epicenter. The location of earthquake is defined not only by its geographical location, the longitude and latitude, but also the depth of the focus. Okay, we we had um, read about the news that, like for example, the earthquake in um, which the earthquake in Bohol, I think, I think it's around Bohol, hits Bohol, and there is a crack. And you can actually see that it is the epicenter of the earthquake. Okay. And below it is the focus or the hypocenter. Okay. The energy released from the hypocenter of an earthquake travels as seismic waves. So this is actually the one being measured. Okay. The different kinds of seismic waves distinguish on where and how they move. Okay. Waves that travel within the interior of the earth are called body waves because they need what? They need a medium to travel, okay? Please turn on your camera. So we have different types of waves. The first one is the primary waves, right? Or P waves. These are body waves, which if it is a body wave, again, it needs a medium to travel. What is a medium? That anything that, that the wave is using in order for it to travel. Okay, it, it could be air, it could be um, a land, it could be any surface that is actually body waves in which the particle material move back and forth. Again, if it is back and forth, parallel to the direction of the wave motion, right? It is compressional wave. Okay, it is also a compressional wave. Again, if the movement is back and forth, it is parallel wave or P waves or compressional wave okay secondary waves on the other hand are body waves where particle materials move back and forth perpendicular okay if it is parallel direction it is compressional primary or p waves but if it is perpendicular to the direction of the wave okay it is actually secondary wave s waves or shear waves okay I will let you see the illustration after, right? Waves that travel along Earth's surface are called surface waves, okay? Rayleigh waves, these are, sur these are surface waves that cause ground ripple and ripple up and down. So ripple up and down, okay? Long waves or love waves rather are surface waves that causes ground to move back and forth in a snake-like movement, okay? The movement is just like this. Okay, this is the illustration. If it is perpendicular, if it is parallel, this is parallel, okay? This is P wave, okay? If the surface shake up and down in sideways because this is perpendicular movement, okay? If it is up and down, it is secondary waves or S waves, okay? On the other hand, the Rayleigh wave is actually moving what? In a circular motion, okay, if it is in circular motion, it is, or ellipse motion, it is Rayleigh wave. And if it is love wave, it looks like a snake. Okay, the movement is just like a snake. Okay, this is a love wave. So as you can see, it is clear in the illustration, the breaking of um, the road. Okay, you can see the movement there. Right? Can you see the illustration? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, do you have any questions so far? Questions so no. far? All right. Seismic waves have different velocities. Okay. P waves travels fastest, followed by the secondary waves or S waves. Okay. 
the surface waves are the slowest. The instrument that detects and records the ground motion of an earthquake is called the seismograph. Okay, the seismograph and the record or the file or the one being um, created by the seismograph is the seismogram. Okay, seismographs consist of heavy mass suspended on a spring and rotating drum that records the motion. Okay, take note as a heads up, it um, we can actually, I will actually ask you to, to do a seismogram. Okay, these are just very basic as your performance task. The drum is anchored and moves in the same way as the ground. During earthquake, the suspended mass remains the rest at rest because of the inertia. Remember the, the law of inertia? What is the law of inertia again? Anybody who remembers the law of inertia? The law of inertia? The law, sir. You're law of inertia. Who remembers? Yes, the law of inertia. Uh, the Newton's law? Yeah, that's the first law of motion by Newton. Okay. Law of inertia states that what? An object at rest remains at rest. An object in motion remains in motion unless acted by the unbalanced force or external force. Okay. Again, this suspended mass will remain at rest. Okay as stated by the law of inertia, unless acted by the unbalanced force or external force. While the drum moves in the ground, okay, the pen attached to the suspended mass and touching the paper in the drum traces out the wave as the drum moves back and forth. Okay, There are two kinds or types of seismographs. One records vertical motion and the other records horizontal in motion. Okay. Modern seismographs use magnets that generate electric signals that are recorded by computers. That's in modern. Okay? Seismograph records the time of arrival and the amplitude, because these are waves, the amplitude of the seismic waves. Okay? Using data of the latency of different waves recorded by seismographs from different places, seismologists, okay? the one who studied um, these seismic waves can actually locate the epicenter of an earthquake. Okay, this is actually an illustration of a seismograph, right? So, as a heads up again for your performance task, I might ask you to do one of these, right? I'll just let you know. The size of an earthquake is measured in two ways, okay? The number that indicates the relative size of energy release in an earthquake is called magnitude, okay? It indicates the relative size of energy. If it is in energy, it is actually, you are now referring to magnitude. It is determined from the maximum amplitude of the ground motion recorded by seismogram, okay? A single increase in earthquake's magnitude is equivalent to 30-fold increase in the energy release. Like for example, the energy release in a magnitude 5 earthquake is equivalent to, to the explosion of 1,000 tons of trinitrotolin. Okay, this is one of the explosives being used okay, by miners. Right? They use trinitrotolin in order to um, to destroy some eight, some edges. While the magnitude six, okay, take note. If magnitude five is around um, 1,000 TNT, okay, magnitude six is equivalent to 30 tons of TNT. Okay, again, a single rise or just a single increase of magnitude actually um, brings you a lot of damages. Okay, we are not talking about here the, the the energy being released by these earthquakes. Okay, intensity on the other hand is the amount of damage brought 
about by an earthquake, usually denoted as Roman numerals. Okay, yes, MD. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, you can. A large earthquake has higher intensity near its epicenter, okay? Than the areas farther away, okay? The first intensity scale being used was the Mercalli, okay? Mercalli intensity scale. It was developed by Josep Mercalli in 1902. In the Philippines, PVOX earthquake intensity scale is actually developed by the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. Okay? The PEIS, okay? PVOX earthquake intensity scale. Okay, this is the one we are actually using here in the Philippines. Okay? Deformation. Tectonic forces operating inside the earth cause rocks to undergo deformation. Okay. This deformation actually creates now the different landforms. It is the process in which rocks change in shape, size, location, even tilt or break due to squeezing, stretching, or shearing forces. Okay. It is the dominant process in the formation of your mountain belts and even other landforms. Okay. In physics, a force applied per unit area is called stress. Okay, we are referring it as stress. Okay, if the forces act uniformly, okay, from a direction or from all direction, it forms a uniform stress. Okay, also referred to as pressure. Okay? We are now building up pressure. The weight of overlying rocks exert pressure, referred to as confining stress. Okay. If the force is not equal from all direction, okay, tendency is the stress is the stress form there is called the differential stress. Okay, now there are three kinds of differential stress we have tension, compression, and shear. So these are now the three differential stress. Tensional or tension stress or tensional stress occurs when the dominant force is directed away from each other. Okay, if it is away from each other, it is actually called as tensional forces or stress. Okay, it stretches rocks causing the elongation parallel to the direction of the stress and shortening the shortening perpendicular to the direction of the stress. Okay, the second one is compressional stress, compress, okay? Again, the first one is tensional because you're actually pulling or the direction is away from each other. It actually pulls each other away. The second one is compressional. The direction here is towards each other, okay? When the dominant force is directed towards each other, it is compressional, okay? It squeezes rocks causing shortening or parallel shortening parallel to the direction of the stress and the elongation perpendicular to the stress direction, okay? This is now compressional. You're compressing, okay? Shear stress develops when the two dominant forces are directly towards each other, but not along the same axis. As a result, in slippage or translation, slip, okay? It slips. Okay, this is now the uniform. All the pressure is actually in all different angles, right? Tensional is actually the pulling or the direction is away from each other. Okay, compression is towards each other. And the shear force is actually the slippage. Okay, the slippage. If it slips, that's the shear force. Okay. Deformation mostly happen beneath or deep the, within the earth, okay, or beneath the earth. And the products are only revealed when rocks are exposed due to erosion, okay? The branch of geology concerned with the study of rock deformation is called structural geology. You still have time? 
Okay, I will give you time to answer your activity. By the way, I prepared something for you. Let's continue by next meeting. Okay. I prepared something for you today. I want you to go to your LMS and answer activity number one. Right? Which is conceptualization. Okay, sir. The one that you... Um... Yes, MD. Uh, in yes. Earth's natural processes, the concept... Yes, that's under Earth's um, natural processes. Okay. Again, I want you to go to your LMS and answer activity number one. Okay. Let me check on the activity. Activity number one, which is conceptualization. Right? Okay. Do you have any questions so far? Anybody? Hi, sir. Okay. What I think that is we all. Juice, we, we had, yes? MD? When is this answer? Due? Yes, Holly? Holly? Sorry, sir, my internet is kind of slow. Okay. So again, if you have questions, please raise it on our GC or directly ask it to me. Or you can directly contact me anytime, right? It's nice to see you, Margie. And I think that's all for today, class. Thank you for your participation. Please answer activity number one, which is conceptualization, right? Um, this would actually end by tomorrow, Friday. Okay. The due date for this is this Friday, right? Tomorrow. Okay. And I'll be checking that one by tomorrow, right? I think that's all for today, class. Thank you for your participation. Great then. Have a nice day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, by the way, let's have a picture Bye. taking first. Please turn on your camera. Picture taking first. I have Rina and Dimitri only. Margie. Okay, in five, four, three, two, one, smile. Another take, smile. All right. Again, thank you for participating, everyone. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.